Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to our getting started guide for Valheim, the open world city builder that is available now on Steam, where you'll be surviving, building ships, and uh, exploring the world as a Viking in the world of the dead. There's our friend Munin, who will help us to explore this world. We'll be skipping a lot of this text just to show you exactly how to get started. Essentially, think of Shadow of the Colossus with all these creatures that will eventually have to fight that are indicated here on the ruins. Well, anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started and run off and build a base here. So, of course, your typical controls of WASD and Shift after you create a character. We'll be improving our skills in pretty much every shape and form as we explore this world a little bit more. We're going to go over this away and... Uh, Grab some sticks off the ground. You can grab things by pressing E. So look for raspberry bushes and uh, down sticks and also stones on the ground. That'll help you to get started in crafting an axe and eventually building your own home. This game also allows you to uh, find destroyed homes or abandoned settlements and rebuild them yourself. And of course, it's multiplayer up to 10 players with PvP and PvE elements. Right now we're making our way to the uh, northeast where I know there's some uh, things that we can find. We'll be avoiding Munin's tips, but he will be giving us all sorts of tips that you can take or granted very soon. He's a very, very wise bird, so make sure you uh, chat with him whenever you can. All right, we're going to make our way continuously to the east here. We're looking for stones, mushrooms. We're also looking for uh, any sort of things that we can pick up off the ground. There's a stone there. So like that, we'll need a few more in order to make what we need. On our way now this game is very small but only $20 on Steam small as in it's only a gig or so to install but again you can play up to 10 friends building yourselves Viking warships and exploring what looks to be an archipelago underneath the world tree essentially we're in the world of the dead if you look closely here our character looks like a model from PlayStation 1 the art style is really unique in the way that it makes you seem like you're in a world that you've kind of forgotten Again, remember, our character is technically dead, so there really is no dying in this game, but really you just kind of respawn uh, with some things uh, forgotten every time that you respawn. It's more like a memory thing. You're like a soul. And uh, let's go ahead and chat with the bird so he leaves us alone for just a brief moment. Let's go ahead and pick up some more stones, and we'll continue to make our way to where we'd like to settle our own, our own home. There are chests inside of buildings such as that one, so it will be valuable to stop and look at everything that you can. But again, in our Getting Started Guide, we're just here to try to show as much in the shortest time as possible. Here we have a little camp where we can find a few rocks outside. Yep, there's a little uh, fire that they had. Perfect. And there's also some bees there, so we're going to want to avoid that. You see the beehive hanging from the top there. That's definitely something to be avoided for now. But eventually destroying those with an arrow could definitely help to uh, give you a little bit of honey, which is a great source of food. And we're going to try to find a clearing here. We're going to head north now and see if we can find a good clearing to build a base. We're also looking out for things like mushrooms and also, oh, here we go, a little camp to explore. Let's check what's inside this building. Eventually, the more we use our skills, the higher they'll increase. There we have uh, flint, coins, and feathers. That'll allow us to make arrows and the money uh, we have yet to find a use for in our playthrough, but there's a mushroom there. Perfect. Excellent, we're grabbing all sorts of sticks and mushrooms that we can. Now, to increase our health in the lower left corner, we'll have to put on armor, and we can also eat a variety of foods in order to uh, increase our stamina and our uh, strength as well. Let's go ahead and see if there's anything inside this building. And there's yet another chest. Very valuable to come and check these out. Look at that. Flint and more arrows. Fantastic. When we make a bow, we'll at least have a few arrows to start with for free, which will save us time and materials. Ah, wonderful. Good place to start building our camp. Look at this. Fantastic. We have some boar over there, so we'll need to be careful for them. They are somewhat dangerous at this time, so we'll need to avoid them until we make a weapon. But this will be our new home. So let's go ahead and uh, find a few things inside these buildings if we can. There could be uh, bees inside these buildings, so we just need to be careful to not go towards the back. And that uh, noise that you hear are deer. They really do kind of give away their position. But we do want to make sure we grab all the materials here. Yet another torch. Fantastic. And this could be our house right here. So we can actually repair the buildings in this game as soon as we make a hammer. We're able to uh, create buildings, edit them, and also repair existing buildings. So if you and your friends stumble across an old village, you can turn it into your new home and build some beds and get started here. We can also terraform the land by making a hoe. So if we want to destroy all these buildings, flatten the land, and then start farming... 
we can do that as well. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with crafting. If we press tab, we can then make ourselves a stone axe. So we'll go ahead and craft that. And Munin is back yet again to give us some more tips. We're also going to make a hammer so that way we can start constructing the hammer. is a very useful tool. And we are unlocking recipes left and right. Hello, Munin. Let's go ahead and see what he has to say to us again. Get off that roof. There we go. <laughs> he disappeared, I guess. He wants to give us more tips. Okay. Well, we got to go ahead and make a floor then. So let's go ahead and actually remove a floor. We're going to put our fire down there. Uh, missing a crafting station, so we need to make that first. So if we right-click and go to crafting, we can start by making ourselves a crafting station as soon as we have enough wood. So that's what we're going to build inside here. So with hotkey 4, we can equip our axe. And we'll go ahead and start cutting down some trees. Now, trees are actually dangerous in this game. If you chop it down and it falls on you, you will die. So don't make that mistake. It's a good idea to start with smaller... Uh, beach trees for now and each time you cut your proficiency with an axe increases and the axe can be used as of course a tool to cut down trees and also as a weapon so make sure you keep that in mind we can also build fortifications for pvp play so every time that we cut down trees we can definitely build a substantial city wall around our city and patrol it with towers and build a gate and we can also build small fences for farming and such that will keep us safe from uh, wolves that may attack at night. It is possible to be attacked by uh, many creatures. There's also boss battles in this game as well. And uh, that is one of the main goals, as I mentioned earlier, about it being similar to Shadow of the Colossus. And in that you'll have to destroy all the bosses in order to get all the benefits to leave this world. They do give you bonuses when you uh, defeat them. So keep in mind that they're quite a big, uh, substantial win if you're able to do that. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can make ourselves a crafting bench finally, a workbench. We'll put that inside of our house here. Perfect. We have that down now. And let's see what else we can start crafting. Uh, we can also start making our cooking station. So let's go ahead and see if we can make a fire. And fire must be placed on the ground. So in order to put the fire there, we have to just remove... Wow, we can actually kick middle mouse button with no weapon selected. Very cool. You can see all the things that we're unlocking. In order to do this, we're going to go to the repair tool. And then just middle mouse button click. And you can destroy that. We can also repair other things. As you can see, all the floorboards that are damaged, we can repair these by left clicking. But for now, the most important thing is just to get some wood going here. And we're actually going to try to take down that beehive as well. We don't have to get too close to it, but it's going to have to go eventually. Alright, so if we put the fire down on the ground and if we make that uh, cooking station, then we can put meat there as soon as we have some meat to put in there and we also have uh, a little chest here let's see what's inside okay nothing right there for now hello Munin again <laughs> all right you've built a workbench yes thank you what else can we build now okay we can go to the workbench now and let's see what we can build from here uh, let's see we can have ourselves a hoe crafted now so that'll allow us to terraform and we also have access to making wood arrows and a few other things, as well as repairing some of our current tools, which will be helpful. Now, when you uh, build your fire indoors, smoke will be a thing, and it will damage your character if it uh, becomes too um, smoky inside your building. So you will need to design buildings around having a fire inside. All homes should have a fire inside of them, so that way you can rest. And you'll need to have a bed and a few other things there, too. So we're going to try to open up the top of our house, just to get rid of some of that smoke. And the bees are attacking me, too. We're going to try to take these bees down. They're getting a little annoying. But we'll have to do that soon when we have a little bit more strength. So let's go ahead and eat some berries and mushrooms. and see if we can get that strength up a bit. You'll see our health there at 24 and increasing as we have a little bit of food on us. Let's also try to craft a bed so we can respawn here in the event of an untimely death. Let's see if we can make some furniture. You can also see the rested bonus in the corner. So the longer that we're at home, the higher that uh, will increase. Now, yeah, let's see. We build a bed here. Excellent. And now we have a spot to get started. Hello, Munin. Or Hugin, sorry. <laughs> I've been saying Mugen the whole time, but it's Hugin. I'm sorry, I forgot. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. These bees have got to go, bro. Okay. Now let's see what happens when we die. I guess not. 
All right, another way to get rid of the bees, if that doesn't work, is our backup plan of deleting the wall that they're attached to, which should be this one. There we go. Bees destroyed. And this will allow us to rebuild our home based on the specs of the uh, fire being there. A little messy, but it works. At least we didn't die. Perfect, so that's a good way to get rid of bees at the start. And we can make all sorts of repairs and get rid of the other hives and the other homes. Good. Very good. Alright, let's go ahead and get started with our next objective. We can make a flint axe, which is a little bit more effective than the stone axe. We can also upgrade our tools now that we have them here too. But the next goal should be to craft something that can upgrade our camp a little bit more that we can put outside, which is going to be this. If we go to our tools, we can take a look that we have this here, the chopping block, which will require some more flint, and the workbench and wood to be nearby in order for us to construct it. Wood in our inventory, that is. This will then bring our cap a crafting station and our camp up to level 1. Right now we're like level 0, and should increase the amount of stuff that we can build. Eventually, tanning racks and other things will be unlocked that we can build around our area. And if you see here, you'll notice that we have ourselves a kind of a crafting area around our base that we can only build certain things. Let's see if it'll pop up again. If It should be a white outline around your camp, and it'll show you how far you can build away from your uh, initial starting area until you have to build another workbench. You can build wherever you want. But you'll just need to make sure certain things are built near a workbench to make a more permanent camp. So, for example, you could have a house here, and then at the other end you could have a, a, maybe a barn for a, a farm that you get started with, too. This is a great area to start a base as well, because we have all these uh, little berries here. And we have ourselves an angry piggy. So let's go ahead and start making some dinner. Hello, sir. There we go. Excellent. Now we can start making uh, more advanced clothing, too. Let's see what Hugin says. He gets a little annoying. There we are. Definitely going to need the raspberries. Okay, let's go and find ourselves another piggy. So these boar can actually be tamed. If you go into an area of the map, which it declares as the dark forest... Or the Black Forest, you can actually get more materials in the game for farming. So you can get carrot seeds and offer to the boars and domesticate them. There we go. We can also hunt deer, of course, as I mentioned earlier, but it'll take a while until we see a bow. So now that we have a little bit of uh, boar hide, we can also craft uh, some of that basic clothing and get it upgraded. And that'll provide some basic armor. Let's go home. All right. Now, in order to expand the back of our house, that should be pretty easy in this rundown shack. For now, it looks good, though. And we've got a good start on where we should be. Let's see what else we can craft now. So, a few more things, and we can make rag tunic and pants, and it'll actually provide some sort of armor to us, one each. Right now, I don't think we have any armor at all, even with our regular uh, clothes on here. The rag tunic we have on, but no rag pants, so that'll give us increased armor. We also need to repair this if we take damage, and these will be ripped up pretty shortly. We'll need to be careful of that. We can also put all the stuff that we have in our box. Let's go ahead and put a few things in here. Uh, like, for example, the, uh, the flint can go in storage. So that should be our first objective at this time. We also have a queen bee, so we can start an apiary and start making mead, too, if we uh, make ourselves a beehive, or rather a... a uh, maybe a apiary or, well, what exactly does it call it? Maybe a beehive. If you destroy a hive, you get a hive. Look at those PlayStation 1 style graphics. I love it. Yeah, so if we put down multiple buildings, it'll increase the stat of our camp and it'll be a great place. Let's go out and see if we can find some more meat. Unfortunately, deer are going to be hard to find, except for that one. It's going to be hard to kill them without bigger stamina and, more importantly, cooked meat. So let's go ahead and get ourselves some cooked meat so we can get our stamina up. Should give us a little bit of a boost. Go ahead and cook that. In order to make coal, all you need to do is leave food on the barbecue for a long time. If you leave it on the fire, the cooking station, it'll eventually turn into coal when it's burned. And that will, of course, uh, give you some more materials to use in forge, in the forge and smelting. Let's go ahead and put some rocks in here. We're going to need a lot of sticks then. And in multiplayer, this is the point where you can divvy up all the tasks for your friends. Some of your friends can begin 
uh, starting to cut down wood, others can build homes, and others can start hunting to accelerate your experience in the game. Let's go ahead and close our house up, and let's go see if we can get ourselves a deer. I'm going to try to chase him down. Very inefficient. Now, if we go for this deer here, this stag is exactly what we're looking for in order to uh, unlock the first boss of the game. It is very difficult to hunt with this. Keep in mind, this is not ideal. We'll also uh, take damage from uh, going into the snowy areas, so make sure you don't do that unless you have protective clothing. So in order to unlock the first boss in the game, you will need to bring a, a deer head or a trophy to an altar in order to unlock the first deer. But make sure that you don't fight that first boss until you at least have a bow and arrow and some very good amount of flint arrows ready to go, at least maybe 40 to 50 in order to get started. Additionally, you might want to also craft a shield and have explored and done a few more things before you go to fight them. Now down here, this is what you're looking for in order to find them. Now you can actually find the bosses by going into dungeons. They'll be marked on your map. If you go into a dungeon, which you'll have to find randomly because every map is different, you'll be able to find their uh, location marked on the map. So if you press M, it'll show you, for example, the initial spawn point where we've crafted our home. There's a dungeon down here in this map, but again, remember, they're all procedurally generated, so you'll have to find them. And this is what you're looking for. You can all come and tell us a little bit more about it. So essentially what we want to do is we want to put an offering down here. and It will summon the boss, and the boss will fight us in the area where the ruins are. So it's right next to our house, so it's a little risky to do, because when he comes down, he might destroy all the buildings nearby and destroy someone's home or chest with items in it. So once it's time... We'll put down the uh, deer trophy here, and it'll actually summon this boss. This boss gives us antler, which we can use then to make a pickaxe, because, again, this is based on uh, Norse lore and mythology. So basically, this deer will provide us with something to go into the black forest or the dark forest in order to start harvesting copper and tin, so that way we can make things like bronze or copper-tipped arrows or whatever we choose to make out of our materials. What will we find? Okay, let's go ahead and see if we can catch a deer again. We'll try to sneak. Let's see if it works. Sneaking does take stamina. And, of course, if you try to sneak, it'll improve your sneaking skills. Very unlikely that we'll be able to get this deer, but let's try. Oh, we got him with a hit. He'll probably run up into the mountain, and I won't be able to chase him. But this is why you want the bow and arrow crafted before you get started there. So it's best to fight boar until you can craft a bow. There we are. We have a bow, uh, a boar trophy to make our bow. We'll just need leather and sticks. So I hope we have enough now. Let's see what we're up to. We only have three, so not a huge amount. Boar also don't always drop uh, leather. So you might need to kill quite a few of them to get the amount of uh, leather that you need. So it looks like in order to craft that crude bow, we just need 8 and 10. So we'll need to go out and cut down some trees, too. So let's go do that. Day-night cycle in the game looks gorgeous. Let's see if we can go find some more trees to cut down. Logs on the ground can also be harvested. There we are. And we're also going to get a bunch of more trees. More mushrooms, more sticks, more stones around. Whatever we find, we're going to try to take. There we are. Skills are still increasing. Now, of course, the bosses give us bonuses, too, that we can use in skills. For example, defeating the deer boss here, we can actually have a 60% de decrease of our stamina usage if we activate it, and that's balancing for PvP purposes. So that way, if somebody becomes more powerful, it's only for a limited time that they can use that as a skill before it then needs a cooldown. There we are, a few more logs to gather. And we just need to find some more boars. More of the story can be found by finding these runes. Runestone here telling us more about the story about Odin 
or uh, any of the lore based on how this world was created or the real world or road rules too or real world road rules challenge there boy that's hard to say all right let's get some more of these boars uh, these are like little goblins as well there's these uh, gray things around you may have saw earlier uh, they drop resin when you when you kill them so it's important to just knock them out very easy to fight these guys you can do it with a couple of swings of it of an axe and resin is important so make sure you grab that though you don't always have to do it all right let's go looking around with our torch we need to also find more boars around we need what eight scrap is it and we're at four so this is gonna be quite a busy time but very important if you uh, get deer they only give you deer skin which is usually made for making armor and the boar are used for making bow so keep in mind that you probably want to get boars first before you go and get deer boars will actually come to you and it makes it a lot easier to to get things done all right now we can sleep and make it daytime we can also be more well rested so let's go back inside if we're cold it only gives us a debuff of our stamina but if we're uh, freezing, then of course that affects our health. So let's go ahead and take a little nap here. And the cool thing about this is if you are inside of your home crafting items, if you have your bed and your uh, fire nearby, the game continues you to be resting and will give you that bonus. And of course, the more things around, the higher that rested bonus will be to increase your overall health. So it's quite a powerful thing. All right, let's go ahead and check out our axe and our torch here. There we go. We're going to go try to find some boar. So we'll try to head north. Alright, more of these creatures. The Grayling. They're afraid of fire, I believe. There we are. Now, the boar should drop leather scraps every time. Quite an important thing to get. But sometimes it seems inconsistent, so we'll have to be careful about it. And we're only going boar hunting so far. Here's some up here. Nope, that's just a rock. Ha! <laughs> Yes, they actually do look like rocks often, too, unless you see them moving. And we're going to have to wander around for a little while. If you're in search of flint, by the way, keep in mind flint can be found down by water sources. So if you go down to the river or the shore, that's where you can find flint, looking like a longer, smooth stone. Again, you can also find it by raiding houses, too. So keep in mind that you're always looking out for uh, ruins such as this. You can check to find a chest. And a chest could provide you with a little bit of flint or some arrows. Definitely something to get you started. Time to eat again to get our stamina and such up. Doesn't look like there's a chest inside, but of course we could destroy this home for wood. Keep in mind, destroying homes for wood takes a lot of energy and doesn't provide as, lo uh, as much wood as harvesting the real resource. Keep in mind that you're destroying a structure, not necessarily harvesting trees, so it gives you materials back as if you were destroying it to move it. So harvesting from there is a little more difficult. Man, this game looks gorgeous. Now we have some more materials here. Amber and honeycomb that we've uh, found so far. And I think we'll need to manually stack things too and a little bit of money that we found. 41 coin, not a bad start. Coin can be found in the uh, dungeons. And we need to find ourselves some more boar. This is really the thing that will slow us down for the beginning. In order to fight the first boss, we really should have an arrow. And we'll need to find all those boar in order to get it unlocked. Heading towards the winter biome. So we'll head the other way. We just need to find a few more of them. We're right now at 
four out of 50. So if we can find four more, that would be a great bonus. We'll head down. Continuously looking for boar. We should also probably be gathering sticks off the ground. Very easy to harvest just by looking at them. And over time, that'll give us some good materials. Fighting enemies is a great way to get your strength up to in certain weapons. For example, when we get a chance to craft the flint spear, it'll be a good weapon, but our proficiency with it will be very low. So when you craft a new weapon, you're relatively bad with it until you've used it a few times. So if you use the axe a lot for cutting down trees and fighting enemies, your axe proficiency will be up. But then when you go to use your axe, it'll almost be as if like crafting the spear wasn't worth it at the start. But the more you use it, the better it will become and it'll be far greater than the axe. Right now we're looking for flint near the coastline. We're looking for a small smooth rock such as this one. And we'll gather a ton of those so that way we can start making arrows. We'll also need it to make things like our tanning rack, which will bring us to level 2. At the very start, we need to craft the uh, chopping block. And the second thing to build is the tanning rack. So make sure you've got an overabundance of materials for you and all of your friends for each of your homes. Or you can, of course, choose to live together in a Viking longhouse and build that, as well as building great ships, too. Let's get these guys out of the way. These guys will provide food. There we are. Quite easy to kill, quite easy to harvest. Still looking for boar. We have ourselves a river. We're just a little swamp that goes up, up the coast. All right, let's keep looking for boar now. Hmm. None just yet. But lots of deer around, it seems. They may respawn. Let's head home. See if we can find some more boar. And we'll need to take another piece of meat there. There we go. We'll cook some more when we get home. Alright, let's get back. We'll grab some scrap. And we'll make ourselves a bow. All right, as we jump forward to another save that I'd done previously, I wanted to show you then the progression that is possible once you've gotten started in the game. In the lower left corner, you can see some things different. For example, a uh, perk that's ready, a skill from killing one of the uh, major bosses and all the progression that is possible throughout the game and all the items that may be there. As you can see outside of our house, we have our chopping block now that is giving us a little bit of a bonus. We do have a... Uh, group of materials in order to build the tanning rack that'll bring us up to level two items you can see here that our uh, crafting bench or workbench is now at level two and if we put down a tanning rack we should be able to increase its level even further now once you brought back all the materials like for example the uh, leather scraps you can then make the bow and then of course we can make arrows either wooden arrows or arrows out of flint and this is exactly what you'll need in order to fight the major boss a few more uh, chests and a little bit of redesign of the house. And we have ourselves smoke being ventilated through the uh, edges of the house. And it still counts as a uh, warm and cozy shelter for us to be able to get some rest and fight some more enemies. Let's go ahead and see what else we might have in terms of materials and cook some more meals here. There we go. We brought back some more food. Got lots of stuff in storage. We're definitely going to need a lot of boxes. So if you're playing with a friend, it may be a good idea to build a uh, maybe a communal storage area as well as storing stuff inside your house. You're going to need a lot of storage in this game. Storage for weapons, basic materials, and things like stones and uh, coal, and a few other uh, items that you might need to share between each other. Looks like the meat is ready to go. We have ourselves a meal. Excellent. Much more bonuses. Fantastic. If we take a look at the map here, you can see that we've defeated the deer boss already. And we have ourselves the... Uh, little axe, the pickaxe to utilize. And of course, this will allow us to go mine from the dark forest, as I had mentioned earlier. Now, I think we're gonna go fight that boss one more time. So that way we can show off how cool everything is 
in terms of fighting the boss. I really do enjoy it. Before we leave, it is a good idea to craft a lot more flint arrows. So in order to do that, we'll just need feather, flint, and wood in order to make those arrows. So we should have those around. Looks like we have a little bit of wood, but we'll grab some more. We also have uh, to grab ourselves a deer head to sacrifice. And we also need to have ourselves a little bit more flint. So we'll make some arrows from the 20 that we have here. So we'll make some flint arrows, which are quite powerful. Looks like we get ourselves quite a bit of um, quite a bit of materials from that. Oh, we also need feathers, too. We'll have to grab those from some chest. Let's see where exactly that might be. Here's our weapons chest, and there we go. Five feathers there, which we can get from just shooting birds that will land on the ground. They're rather rare, so a lot of the feathers that I've found so far are by looking at the uh, ground and just finding them there or inside of chests. 29 out of 100. Let's go 49 out of 100. And we'll put the rest of the feathers back into storage. All right, so once you have everything ready to go, it is recommended before fighting the first boss to have yourself armor made from leather, which you'll get from uh, getting all the deer. So you'll have yourself pants, a tunic, and a helmet. You should have your uh, crude bow as well. When you do all of your upgrades, you can come back to your workbench and take anything that you've crafted so far and upgrade it to level 2. The level will be indicated in the upper right corner so you'll know everything's good to go. So once you've made your uh, maybe axe or your bow and arrow, you can then come here and see what it takes to upgrade. And to get to level 3, for example, we'll need more leather scrap and more deer hide. And eventually, we'll be ready to go. Alright, let's go ahead and fight this deer boss. Now, it seems like we can fight bosses repetitively. We've already fought this one, so let's summon him again and see if we can get some more bonuses for doing it. Looks like we're a little hungry, too, so we eat some more mushrooms that we found. And that'll get our bonus up in strength, health, and speed. Now, if you go to the rune, you can see where it says hunt his kin. And that's exactly what we need to do to summon this boss. All right, we'll go ahead and put the uh, deer head up here. And here we go. If you put it in the hot bar and press the hot bar button on the rune, it'll summon the boss, and here he comes. And there he is. Now it seems that the bow, when you fire it, it fires low and to the left. So make sure when you target, you're high and to the right to counteract it. This boss will charge you, he'll do an electric bolt thrust, and he'll also do a beam attack. That'll create a shield around him, such as that one. He'll also try to charge you, and eventually will stop in order to shoot beams such as that, lightning bolts. There we go. Watch your stamina. As you need to keep outrunning him. With a few friends, you should have no problem. Very <laughs> much like Breath of the Wild, these art styles here. In my opinion, it lo really looks good. Taking a few hits isn't too bad from this boss. A little bit more. We can also dodge and roll too, but sprinting is fairly easy. Although it is impossible to pull back your bow when you are rolling or sprinting. We also have his ability that we can uh, choose. In the lower left corner it says that it's ready. But I just want to show the tactics of using it before you get it. The boss is almost dead at this point. Let's switch to our axe and see how that would work. Very difficult in close range combat. That's why the bow is recommended. A few more hits and we got him.
One more. And we got him. Boss is down, ladies and gentlemen. So keep in mind, if you're building structures, there is a chance that the boss could damage the structure. So it might be a good idea not to fight so close to home. And we have more uh, hardened antler now, so that way we can go out mining for quite some time. Fantastic. Well, that is a crash course on getting started in Valheim. I've enjoyed what I've played so far, so I'd like to invite everybody to my home and click and tap that subscribe button, smash the like button, and don't forget to uh, check out the live streams of this game where we have much, much more to do. That is just the very basics, a very uh, cr big crash course in this game, which I thoroughly enjoy. It's really, really fun. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for being here. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye, everybody, and have a fantastic day.